All right, so it's a mouthful, but what we're going to look at is the evolution of API management and right, how, how API management fits in to today's era. Right? Uh, one of the things that one of, our vend one of the vendors and one of our competitors basically spoke about in November is that uh, API management is dead. Right? And there was a lot of buzz around this. That competitor now went, I think, two weeks back, they bought a testing framework and a full lifecycle API management framework as well. So they're not living up to that. But, but basically, the death of API management as we know it. So, so this session is basically to see whether that's true, whether there's any truth to that, uh, how this plays in and how API management plays in with service measures and Envoy and, and the various proxies and gateways, so on and so forth. And, and at the end, see whether that's true. Right? OK. But coming back to the basics, right? Why, like, why did people start thinking of API management in the first place? And and this brings us to application modernization, and the ultimate goal of really innovation, uh, speed to market, security, uh, the creativity, that whole side, right? But but basically decoupling applications, and there are various reasons for decoupling applications, right? If you so, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but you decouple at the infrastructure layer. And that's where things like infrastructure service and so on and so forth comes in, like AWS, et cetera, right? And you don't have to worry about that underlying layer. You, you bypass security. I mean, you hand over security. You hand over uh, the availability, the uptime, all of this to the infrastructure layer, right? So then you decouple that. You let that layer handle that. Container technologies came up, like uh, Docker and Kubernetes and the various technologies. So you decouple from the compute fabric. You, you ensure that you have consistency. You, you basically ensure that there's a framework that takes care of routing, so on and so forth. So you basically decouple there. You don't have to worry about that layer. And that increases innovation. right? So you, you basically decouple at different layers. You decouple from external consumers. So now you don't have to worry about what the underlying technology is, whether this, this request is going through to the right backend, so on and so forth. Similarly, you decouple from internal consumers, and then you, didn't know, you don't have to worry about whether there is an endpoint there, which endpoint is really being accessed, whether this endpoint is in this data center or the other data center. And then, of course, you decouple apps into microservices. Right? And there are different technologies at different layers. Like The first layer is, of course, infrastructure service. The second layer is like container technologies. The third layer, external APIs, is really API management or API gateways, whatever we want to call it. The fourth layer is basically service meshes, right? That, that's coming up a lot, and, and so on and so forth, right? So there are different approaches of doing this. Uh, we, of course, know of the API gateway pattern, a popular pattern popularized some time back, and there are different variations of this. But in essence, API gateways is a policy enforcement point, right? You, you basically have your backends there. Let me see whether my pointer works here. Oh, yeah, right. So, so you have your backends, different technologies. You have policy enforcement points, either as a center of excellence central system or a set of decentralized systems. Regardless, you basically have a centralized way of managing your policies or your governance, right? And, and this is basically decoupling your backends uh, by using a gateway. And there are different ways of doing this. There are companies that purely do gateways. There are companies that do API management, which has a gateway solution as part of it. Uh, example, WSO2. And there are frameworks out there that basically allow you to build gateways. Right? Uh, there, was, there was a good session on Ballerina, and there was lots of mentions of Ballerina. But there are frameworks out there that can actually auto-spin a gateway up for you. So it's not necessarily a, like a very specialized component. But as long as you can achieve those benefits, right? so that's, that's a pattern. It's an architectural pattern. But then when people talk about API gateways, API gateways alone is not the full API management picture. Right? Paul, in his session in the morning, spoke about what is API management and what's the benefits of API management. Right? Uh, there are companies out there that have a pure gateway. And, and that loses out on some of the other capabilities that wider API management brings you. Right? For example, a marketplace. So the ability to have a marketplace, internal or external, right, is, is very valuable. Like, for example, let's say you are 
abstracting your services. You build a bunch of APIs. You have 500 APIs internally. And now you want the internal teams to be able to discover those APIs and start building applications. So you want creativity from within. You want basically you want the ability for these teams to be able to take these services and build services on top of that, build APIs on top of that, build applications on top of that. Right? So once you have that model going well, right, once you have your house in order, then you basically look at external business models and how you can productize these APIs and expose them externally. Right? So, so that's, that's one feature. And, and there's many other features that the wider API management domain brings in. So it's not just API gateways alone. There is definitely API gateways as a policy enforcement point role. But then there is a lot of value that the wider API management system brings in. So it's not a matter of always saying that API management is dead. But it's basically being able to distribute those components out, to decouple those components uh, uh, easily, and figuring out exactly where you need various kinds of capabilities. But then with API gateways coming out some time back, and then of course API management solutions out there, full lifecycle API management solutions, uh, sometime back, Lyft basically started working on the proxy, and on Envoy proxy, and then released that. And around that, there were multiple solutions, including the service mesh, right? But in, in essence, what Envoy is, is basically a cluster ingress gateway. Right? So you have a cluster of services. These can be microservices. These can be any other services. And you basically have a way of traffic entering that cluster. And that, that's basically what a proxy is. And, and these proxies can vary in capabilities, right? They can act as policy enforcement points, but in essence, it's really a routing requirement, right? So you basically have traffic coming in. You don't have to worry about where the actual endpoints are or where the actual services are sitting. You basically allow the proxy to route your services to the back end. Right? And, there, and, and there's basically uh, many technologies out there, including Kubernetes, uh, HA proxy, Envoy, different technologies out there. So th there was this one part of the world which was thinking, OK, I don't need an API gateway anymore. I don't need API management anymore. I can just stick to Envoy, because Envoy is already there as part of various technologies. I can use that as a proxy. So there is a, uh, there is a lot of communities that basically believe in this still. right? And because Envoy came out, there were many technologies built around Envoy. And, and uh, Istio, one of them, right? basically, one of the service meshes out there. But there's, of course, Linkerd and many other service meshes coming out there as well. So there's a reason why people use service meshes, right? So basically, you have like hundreds or thousands of microservices. You basically need a, a way of handing over some of those microservices challenges to a different layer, right? And service mesh basically provides you with those capabilities. So you allow the service mesh to handle uh, like east-west traffic, uh, basically routing, quality of service, so on and so forth, right? Things that you'd have to handle as a microservices developer, right? So now you have a service mesh, you bring that in, and you basically let the service mesh handle it. But lo and behold, the service mesh also has a proxy, right? Which is Envoy in Istio's case. So then people start thinking, okay, like, do I really need to pass traffic on to another API gateway when I already have a proxy at this layer? Which is a fair requirement, right? So a fair, fair way of thinking about it. So if you look at uh, Envoy as well, so you have microservices, you have various proxies, you basically have a mesh control plane. But in a sense, this looks like the gateway pattern, right? In, in, in one sense, this is a variation of the gateway pattern. Right? Uh, but so that brings us to the theme of this, really. So when you're a hammer, everything you look at is a nail, right? And, and this applies to all, all the areas. Right? If you have API management, then you start looking at, like, how do I fit API management into this problem, this problem, and this problem? If you have service meshes, it, it, the same thing applies. Right? How do you apply, or how do you fit a service mesh into your environment? Right? And, and that's a serious problem today, because you need to really start looking at whether these various technologies really fit into these environments. Right? So for example, let's say you have uh, a bunch of services, let's say you have uh, 10 services, right? And, and these services, you have APIs that are exposed, and, and you have a few customers or few clients, not customers, clients, uh, consuming these, AP these APIs. So it really doesn't make sense to then go and put a bulky service mesh in there to manage those services or the east-west communication between those services, right? Similarly, let's say you have a, a very simple 
environment, and, and you don't have too many API use cases there. It's like just one UI just talking to a backend. Maybe it doesn't make sense to go dump a full API management, full lifecycle API management solution in there, right? So, so there are different technologies that fit in different spaces. But one of the core things is really to look at the problem at hand and see whether you are really solving a problem or whether you are creating more problems, right? Because like going and putting a service mesh in is not an easy thing. Right? So, so basically, you need teams that know this technology, that can manage this technology, that can handle these, so on and so forth, right? So, so that's that's a key thing to look at. Uh, sorry, that slide is a bit skewed. So, so that's that's what we'll we'll basically come to. So, how how does all of these live together, right? So, one way of looking at this is the separation of concerns, right? So, so let's say you have an environment which already has a service mesh, right? If that's the case, oops, sorry. Okay, if if that's the case, basically your service mesh can now handle your east-west traffic, which is basically traffic between the various services or the, between the various applications within the environment. And then your API gateway can handle the north-south traffic, which is basically consumers consuming these services. Now, this can be external traffic, external consumers trying to come into the, uh, into the environment, or in some cases, these can be internal traffic as well. Right? So let's say if you have like hundreds of microservices. These microservices communicate with each other through the service mesh, and you don't need to worry about really exposing like various services at that level. But then if you want to expose APIs, and if you want developers to basically discover these APIs and build applications from these APIs, maybe that's, a, a, that's an area where the API gateways come in. Right? So, so that's one way of looking at it. Um, sorry. So, I basically put this together, like some of these are borrowed, of course, uh, just to show that there are overlapping concerns as well, right? So if you basically look at this, there's a service mesh, so service meshes handle like certain capabilities like resilience, observability, rate limiting, so on and so forth, right? Uh, you have API gateways which handle like a, a wider thing as well. And when I say API gateways, I'm using this term interchangeably, right? So API management, API gateways where you have like the developer ecosystems, you handle monetization of these API digital products, you basically handle the documentation and the SDKs, the discoverability of these APIs. So you treat APIs as digital products. Right? Uh, one of the interesting things I saw, I think, yesterday was, so instead of using the word API or the term API, which is application programming interface, someone said APIs are dead, it should be VPI which is like value programming interfaces, where what you really expose is value, or intellectual property, or, or digital property, and not just APIs, right? So you don't think in terms of APIs anymore, but you think in terms of value, and, and you just expose that value to certain stakeholders. So that's, that's what that basic player does, right? Uh, so there are some things that, uh, that overlap, like security policies. You can do that at the service mesh layer, as well as the gateway layer. There is the, the whole rate limiting part, uh, various kinds of policies, et cetera. Right? But then there is also this requirement of integration. Right? So when you go into a cloud native environment, uh, you have your API gateways, you have your service meshes, right? but none of them really solve your integration requirement. Right? So if it's simple enough, yes, maybe it's something that is done at the application layer or it's something that is done at the API gateway layer. Right? But in, in most cases, and, and as was the theme of today, right? Integration is complex. Integration constitutes 50% of development. Every developer is an integration developer, right? So that's been the theme of the day, right? So there is definitely a gap for integration. And, and Samira's session on Ballerina addresses that. Kasun's session on uh, integration in a cloud-native environment addresses that. So there is definitely a role of integration in, in this as well. And there are certain over, overlying, overlying capabilities or features between a service mesh and integration, between an integration layer and API gateways, and of course, uh, between all three. Right? So it's, it's important that you see what technologies you have, uh, what, tech, what capabilities can be handled by different layers, and then basically pick the right solution. Um, so there's two patterns that we'll basically look at. Uh, if you've seen, the WSU API manager, if you've used it, right, 
we had a centralized gateway in the past. So you had like the full lifecycle API management and the ability to deploy a centralized gateway. We then started releasing something called a micro gateway, which, which some of you are using already, which is basically a, a really small footprint gateway with self-contained tokens with a totally stateless architecture that can be horizontally scaled. Right? So the micro gateway are, is used by some customers as a pure gateway. Right? Uh, there's even a customer looking at deploying the micro gateways in point of sale devices. So like you have uh, 100,000 point of sale devices and you'll have a small micro gateway within each device which will expose APIs to the services within that device. Right? It's, so it's small enough, this footprint is small enough uh, so the micro gateway is a developer-oriented gateway. So it's part of your CI/CD process. Let's say you create a bunch of microservices. Automatically, it spins up a gateway. It publishes the APIs, burns that into uh, uh, an image. Maybe it's part of a cell, and then that's deployed. Right. So it's it's a, a cloud-native gateway. Uh, so there are different ways of deploying the micro gateway. Uh, you can basically have a private jet mode. So a bunch, let's say one microservice or a bunch of microservices have its own micro gateway. You have a, a centralized mode, right? Similar to whatever you have today. So a group of microservices, everything is deployed onto a, a gateway and you can decide how that micro gateway is deployed. You have a sidecar mode where each microservice might have its own micro gateway, and so on and so forth. Right? And, but all of these can still have a centralized developer portal where all the APIs are registered, uh, all of these basically go through a central CI/CD process, right, to to spin up the micro gateways, etc. So that's that's one way of working with uh, cloud native API management, and this can be the layer on top, and the layer on bottom can basically be a service mesh layer or any any layer, right. But similarly, let's say if you have a service mesh, and if you want to incorporate API management into the service mesh layer itself, right. So in that case you need to think like whether you should use the Envoy proxy that's already there or use the, maybe the micro gateway. And what we've done is we've recognized that the Envoy proxy can basically handle out the gateway capabilities. There's certain management capabilities that are required, that are gaps. So, so what we've done is we've bridged those gaps. Right? So for example, if you have a service mesh already, you already have Envoy. So what we do is we use Envoy as the gateway, as the policy enforcement point. And we basically use the other capabilities like the management capabilities or the management plane to basically send information or policies to Envoy or the gateway. Right? So, so basically, uh, we have an adapter to Istio Mixer, uh, which will basically push the policies onto Envoy. And these will still be registered in the developer portal. It will still use the publisher. It will still use traffic management, so on and so forth. Right? So the full lifecycle API management capabilities, but using Envoy. And, and th so that is useful if you're basically already using a service mesh, and you want those full lifecycle API management capabilities. Right? OK, so yeah, I'm good on time, I think. So it comes back to the original question, right? Is it the death of API management as we know it? Oh, did I drop this? Sorry. Hello? OK. Is it the API manage death of API management as we know it? Not really, right? So, so basically, that's only true if your systems can't adapt. Right? So basically, IT continuously changes. The technology landscape continuously changes. The cloud landscape continuously changes. And your systems basically need to change as well. And if you're building your systems on top of vendor-driven systems, those vendor-driven systems should be at the bleeding edge. They should be flexible enough. They should be extensible enough. And they should move with the times as well. So as long as those systems can adapt to the changing requirements, then this is not true. Right? So, so basically, that brings us to one of our themes. Right? So it's the survival of the fittest. And it's basically systems that can adapt and that can change and that can live with times that can be future-proof. So if you're building an architecture on a, a, a vendor technology, you have to pick something that can move with the times and that can basically be future-proof. Right? So, so that's, that's the theme of this talk. 